Hi, Jamie Phipps here, board chair, Grampian, and president of Gelia, one of tonight's sponsors. On behalf of the board of directors, I wanted to thank all of you for exhibiting great nimbleness and flexibility today as we all kind of bobbed and weaved to support this year's Breath of Life Gala. The mission of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is clear, to cure cystic fibrosis and to provide all people with CF the opportunity to lead long, fulfilling lives. Now, there's no caveat within our mission statement that says only on warm, sunny days or when we can all formally gather together in a large banquet hall wearing our Sunday best. So we continue on with this gala being a little different and different in a good way. It's testing our resolve and commitment to the mission and vividly and beautifully shining a light on those of you marshalling forward, rain or shine, in person or not. You, my friends, will not be denied. And tonight, I am so honored to be reaching out into your homes and addressing you and your loved ones. I'm kind of channeling previous galas, and I feel like I'm speaking to a room full of 300 of the most giving souls in the world. So I'm visualizing lifting your table up and landing it right within your kitchen or living room. The only trouble I'm having is I'm not seeing a lot of tuxedos and fancy dresses, rather more build jerseys, jeans, and sweaters. But as long as we're all gathered, focused, and committed, it's going to be a truly special gala. We are going to hear some moving stories from our honorees and their families and continue on with our virtual auction. And for those of you who picked up a dinner this afternoon at Rich Products during our parking lot pickup party, I hope you thoroughly enjoy them as they were prepared by our presenting sponsor, Rich Products. Now I'd like to turn it over to our host for the evening, a great friend of the foundation, Steve Brown from Channel 2 WGRZ. Steve, take it away. Good evening and thank you, Jamie, for that introduction. It is great to be back as your host. I'm thrilled that so many of you have joined us for this virtual event celebrating 16 years of Western New York's Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Breath of Life Gala. Thank you to all who joined us earlier for some fun galligating in the Rich Products parking lot. It was great to see the honorees, the sponsors, families, and volunteers. We would like to now start this evening's presentation by presenting our first award. The CF Foundation continues to be the world leader in the search for a cure. October 2019 brought us a tremendous breakthrough for those living with CF. Two years ago, the FDA announced its approval of Trikafta. This milestone, and it's a milestone, is the result of an extraordinary community working together against great odds. And we are overjoyed that this will mean more people will have effective treatments for their disease, better health, and longer life may result. Over 65 years ago, CF was the story of no research and no treatments. Today, it is one of the most amazing stories in medicine. And that is why this award is so important, the Excellence in Care Award, given to individuals who are active in the CF community, who work to improve the lives of those living with CF through research and new treatments. This year's Excellence in Care Award goes to Christine Rauch, research nurse and study coordinator at our Western New York Care Center. Here is a special message from the Western New York Care Center's directors, Dr. Danielle Goetz and Carla Fredericks, to say a few words. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Danielle Goetz, and I'm the CF Center Director in Buffalo, New York. And I'm so happy to congratulate Chris Roach on receiving the Excellence in Care Award from the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Chris is our wonderful research nurse who's been with us for seven years, and she is such an incredible resource to all of our patients and our staff. She works so hard to make sure that the patients are well taken care of. She knows everything about budgets. She has been such a pleasure to work with over the years. And um, one thing I would say about Chris is that she puts her whole heart into her work and she is so dedicated to all of our patients in pulmonology. We are so happy for Chris and for all of her family. Um, she cares so much and we care about, about her so much and we wanna congratulate her on the Excellence in Care Award. Thank you, Chris. 
I wholeheartedly echo the words of Dr. Getz. Chris is truly a caring and devoted, sharp and talented nurse who is an amazing asset to the CF Center of Western New York. She has participated in many trials over the years that have brought amazing therapies to people with CF to improve their quality of life. She works tirelessly behind the scenes, getting studies started up and closing them out. And during those trials where patients get to experience new therapies for the first time, she is someone they can trust. She is excited for them, she encourages them, and she builds relationships that they'll never forget. And she probably won't either. Chris loves her family. She loves her parents, her kids, her husband, her aunts and uncles. And we are so fortunate that the way she's wired, the love she has for them, overflows to the people she cares for, to the patients, to the families, and to us as coworkers. Chris, you are a beautiful person and a wonderful friend. It brings me and the rest of the center such great joy to congratulate you on the Excellence in Care Award. Well deserved. Thank you for all you do. Thanks for letting me participate in this event. We hope you have a great rest of the night. Thank you so much. I am so honored to receive this award and to be part of this evening's celebration. I'm not very good at accepting praise uh, and recognition, so please um, bear with me as this is a little uncomfortable for me. I've always believed that our place in this world is to do our best, to help others as we can, and to help ease the burden that others carry. I think that was one of the many reasons that I decided to become a nurse. Many, many years ago, Nadine Kachi, who I had known from a former life as sisters, uh, hospital employees, approached me about leaving my pediatric GI research position and coming to work in research in the CF uh, Center. I um, persistently turned her down and she persistently asked and I continued to persistently turn her down. My work situation changed and I wasn't very happy in the position that I was in and um, Nadine caught wind of this um, thanks to Lisa Flattery Walsh and um, Nadine asked me to meet her out for coffee. Um, we met out for that coffee, and uh, what took me years to make in a decision was one of the best decisions that I made in my nursing career and in my personal life um, because it made me so much happier as a person to be with like-minded people. One regret I have is that I didn't make that decision earlier. I was welcomed into the CF team and family, and I do mean that we're family with open arms. Initially, I was given the opportunity to help organize and manage the Depression and Anxiety Screening Quality Improvement Project under the directions of Drs. Drusy Borowitz, Carla Frederick, Danielle Getz, and Beth Smith. These physicians are by far the best principal investigators or researchers and the best people uh, and genuine women around. They're not afraid to raise others up and to encourage others to grow in their career. My work on this project allowed me to present at NACFC to collaborate with some really incredible collaborators and leaders on the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation's Mental Health Advisory Committee, where I managed the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Dropbox with mental health materials that are shared around the country and even into other countries. This project has allowed other centers from our medium-sized center in Buffalo to learn how to initiate a screening program at their own center. It didn't take me long before I was given studies that started to enroll patients. I coordinated a modulator study for our Cambian preteens. I interviewed parents of and people with CF on what they recalled about being told that their disease was a life-shortening disease. And I took on studies that were observational, trying to understand what the modulators did to people with CF. I was able to learn through a study how to intervene with depressed or anxious people using cognitive behavioral help uh, I'm sorry, cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, to help lessen or prevent their depression and anxiety. Recently, I've coordinated the modulator that was being tested alongside TriCAFTA, um, testing to help the sponsor decide which of the modulators, the triple modulators, was going to be moved forward to um, FDA review and approval. I also coordinated a study for open-label TriCAFTA because, as we all know, TriCAFTA was the deciding um, modulator that was moved forward. Um, and we did long-term safety study for safety data. This allowed me the opportunity to have the same study participants in these studies for over three and a half years. By far, these triple modulator studies have been the most rewarding to do because um, they've had such a tremendous um, effect on uh, decreasing pulmonary symptoms in patients, hospitalizations, and improving their well-being, quality of life, 
and um, future. I recall Nadine and I being really excited to see the patients when they would come in for their two week post study start um, to see if we could tell if they were on study drug. And we were just as excited as them to share if they were, um, how they were feeling and how good, um, how good it's been for them. I've been blessed to work with a great team of people, people who drank the Kool-Aid, people who were passionate about CF and they shared that passion and enthusiasm with me. They helped me wanna make a difference in the lives of people with CF. By far, the people with CF are at the forefront of why we do all that we do at our center. I've been lucky to have wonderful people participating in the clinical trials I have, have coordinated. They've become friends and like family, and we spend a lot of time together, and we get to know each other pretty well. They give them themselves in both time and commitment, and I thank them for their participation and their friendship. They give for others to offer hope. I've always known it, but in this past year with my dad's sudden Diagnosis of terminal cancer and his subsequent death, I've come to appreciate it even more the need for hope. Hope for the future, hope for a cure, hope for a better tomorrow. I feel research does this. It offers hope. It allows science to advance from a concept in a lab to a medicine we can take to enrich our lives. It goes from an idea to help people with CF cope to a CF specific CBT program to a dream to live a long fulfilled life. It offers hope for a better tomorrow. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank my husband, Tim, and my now adult children, Jeremy, Nathan, and Marissa, for understanding um, why dinner had to be late many years and um, uh, why I had to stay at work a little longer than I expected to. I love you all very, very much. I accept this award on behalf of my coworkers and CF patients and participants. They were there before I drank the Kool-Aid and I know they will be there long after. The CF Foundation and the CF Center of Western New York will continue to offer hope until CF stands for Cure Found. Thank you and have a good evening. Again, congratulations, Christine, and thank you for the work that you do and for reminding us all why we are here tonight. As we continue our award ceremony, I'm reminded that each of our honorees this evening is a true ambassador of the CF Foundation. Each of them comes from a different walk of life, but have proven that we are stronger together until it's done. loud in making sure that Major gets the care that he needs. I'm married because we need affordable, adequate, and available health care. Cystic fibrosis is a rare genetic life-shortening disease, and my uncle is one of them.
And tonight we recognize two true ambassadors, Paul and Catherine Reed. We honor the Reeds tonight as our Commitment to a Cure Award winners. This award is one of the Foundation's highest honors, and it recognizes an individual, family, or organization that has demonstrated outstanding commitment to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and its mission to find a cure for CF. Here is a message from Paul's brother, Bob Reed, to say a few words to help us celebrate Paul and Catherine's commitment to the CF Foundation. in Albany are honored this evening to be part of tonight's gala. We are so grateful that you're honoring Paul and Katie and awarding them the Commitment to Cure Award. Needless to say, we regret that we all can't join everyone in person. Hopefully with universal vaccination next year, we can all be together. Paul and Kate's efforts over the years cannot be overstated. Since our daughter Elizabeth's diagnosis in 1993, they have been all in, helping the Foundation achieve effective treatment for cystic fibrosis. Both Lisa, Elizabeth's mom, and I served as leaders of our local chapter, so we're very familiar with the difficult challenges of raising monies for an orphan disease like CF. Paul and Kate's support for countless CF events in Western New York, along with raising monies at Crosby Markets, are just some of the examples of their past and ongoing support. Paul and Katie's efforts and all your hard work in Western New York have yielded a drug, Trikafta, which has made a tremendous difference in the life of our daughter. She's a completely different person. Thank you. But clearly none of this would have been possible without the early work of Bob Bell and the CF Foundation and all the wonderful doctors Elizabeth has, over the, has had over the years, such as Dr. Winnie, Dr. Kozlowski, Dr. Comer, Dr. Rosen, the Albany Medical College, Dr. Gerard and Dr. Euler, at Boston Children's, Dr. Tarowski and Dr. Dasenberg at the Cleveland Clinic. And in Western New York, you are so lucky to have a, such a great CF center at the uh, at Women and Children's Hospital. We really can't thank you enough. Now, however, is not the time to stop. We must work to make sure that every child born and every person today has access to treatment and has availability of a cure. Before I end, I wanted to share a few pictures of our family with you over the years with Elizabeth, Katie, and Paul, and other members of the family. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful gala. Good evening. On behalf of our family, Kate and I would like to thank the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for recognizing us with the Commitment for a Cure Award. Cystic fibrosis has had a notable impact on our lives, both early on for me and later on for us both. When I was a young boy, we visited family in Fostoria, Ohio. There I met my cousin, Jimmy. We were about the same age. He was a little older, at age nine or so, and we had a great time playing and getting acquainted for a couple of days. I was looking forward to our next visit from the time we left. Sadly, I learned early the next year that Jimmy died. My mother said that he had cystic fibrosis. I had not known what CF was and did not understand what was involved, but it made an impression at the time and, and not a good one. Years later, when my brother and his wife had their first child, we learned a couple of years after that she was born too with cystic fibrosis. Based on my memory of Jimmy, I was alarmed, very alarmed. Over the years, we watched as our niece struggled through her childhood, adolescence, and more recent years in adulthood. We were continually amazed at her courage, her perseverance, 
and her fortitude as she battled cystic fibrosis. The obstacles are many and the choices are few with those for those with CF. Our daughter and niece were very close in age and, and close friends uh, growing up and we wanna share a couple of stories here. When our daughter was young, she was assigned a paper on, if you had but one wish for a day, what would you wish for? She decided to ask her, her, her cousin, our niece, uh, what she thought. Her answer was to not have CF for just that one day, to be normal for just one day. Her answer was so humbling, to enjoy something we all take for granted every day. Some years later, our daughter wrote another paper about a special person in her life. She wrote about her cousin. Her story was titled, My Quiet Hero. That about sums it up about CF patients. They are our quiet heroes. It has been a miraculous journey for our niece, and I do believe miracles are, have kept her alive to this point. The new medications developed through the incredible generosity of so many thousands of people and the scientific genius of, of researchers and scientists now provide her with an opportunity for a quasi-normal life. We are very proud to be a very, very small part of this work to find a cure and look forward to continuing our support going forward. Once again, thank you very much for today's award. Paul and Catherine, your commitment to a cure is undeniable. On behalf of the CF Foundation, we thank you for your dedication to the CF community. Our last award of the evening is the Katie's Courage Award. Each year, the CF Foundation awards a deserving recipient who is living with cystic fibrosis, demonstrates incredible courage and a fighting spirit, and shares a zest for life. This award is named for Katie Ozog. Katie passed away at the young age of 22, becoming an angel among us. We remember her tonight by passing the torch of her legacy onto this year's recipient, Lauren Riley, as she continues to embody the spirit of the Katie's Courage Award. Lauren is a true CF fighter. She has overcome so many challenges and she continues on a path to inspiring others. Here's Lauren's family to help us share her inspirational story. Hi, my name is Megan Randall, and I am honored to be part of tonight's celebration. Matthew 17, 20 says, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I have witnessed with my own eyes gigantic cystic fibrosis mountains move over the years because of the faith that my sister has in a wonderful God who loves her. My little sister has shown bravery far beyond any superhero, and I am blessed to be her sister because of the trust and faith she holds so strong to in the times when she has to be most courageous. Courage, I believe, is defined as being motivated from the heart to do something brave, and that's this year's Katie's Courage Award winner, my little sister, Lauren Riley. In her most difficult circumstances, Lauren has held on to being sure of what she hopes for and certain of what's unforeseen. And that's straight up faith. It's been really awesome to witness. So thank you everybody who is here tonight celebrating and just honoring those with cystic fibrosis. We are so grateful to you. Thanks. Good evening. We are very excited and proud that Lauren Riley has been selected as the Katie's Courage Award winner for this, for this year. I'm Paul Riley, Lauren's dad. At a young age, Lauren was special, is special. Uh, she was our athlete. She could throw a ball, play soccer, play golf, as good as any girl and even as good as any boy and still does today. Um, although at age 17, she was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. And as a young person, it's difficult to accept 
a diagnosis like that and the reality, reality that goes along with it. An uncertain future and the health concerns. And for us, for parents, what was cystic fibrosis? What is cystic fibrosis? We learned a lot. We have learned a lot. Lauren has faced every challenge with a strength from within. Conquers her daily challenges. And over the years, the tune-ups, and there's been many, many, many. And very fortunately, there hasn't been many in a couple years. And that's a really good thing. CF doesn't quit, and Lauren is not a quitter, and she will fight till the end. For, for a little over two years ago, Lauren was fortunate enough to participate in the Trikafta trials, and to date, to date, her life is transformed. It's a miracle. She leads a very normal and healthy life, and we are grateful for, the, for Trikafta. We're grateful to the CF community of Western New York, all the doctors, nurses, the entire Long Center staff, and especially grateful to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation for their tireless <coughs> efforts as they strive for the cure. Again, we're very proud and excited for Lauren, and she will certainly enjoy this honor. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I'm incredibly honored to be receiving the Katie's Courage Award at this evening's special celebration. It truly means so much to me. When I was 18, I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis and cystic fibrosis-related diabetes. It was very scary as I had never heard of the disease and I was about to begin my first semester of college. To say CF changed my life almost seems like an understatement, but I've come to appreciate and even be grateful for my CF. Living with and managing the disease, however, does come with its own set of challenges. There have been many sleepless cough-ridden nights leading to exhausted, fatigue-filled days, multiple lonely hospital visits, seemed to last forever, and the occasional stare from an onlooker who just happened to catch one of my coughing episodes. I don't say these things to make anyone feel badly, but rather to instill hope. Because of this CF Foundation and its people's determination to find a cure, people like me, who are living with CF, don't have to endure sleepless cough-ridden nights or concerned stares at their grocery store. They're able to live active lives, go to work, finish their bucket lists, and fulfill their passions. I know this is true for me, and I'm so thankful to be able to say that. I was fortunate enough to be part of a research study for Trikafta over the last couple years. I almost didn't make the study due to instability with my lung function, but I have the most wonderful doctors, PAs, and nurses who advocated for my involvement. And I'm beyond grateful that they did that. Without them and the life-changing drug Trikafta, my future would look quite different. This makes me feel so blessed to be involved with the CF Foundation and all its efforts to find a cure for CF. My family and I have been involved with many other foundation events over the last few years, such as Great Strides, CF Sational Women's Luncheon, the 65 Roses Golf Tournament, and Breath of Life Gala's Past. Without the CF Foundation and its dedication to those people impacted by the disease, whether it's a person with CF, parents, grandparents, spouses, or friends, there would be far less hope. Plus, they make finding a cure more fun with celebrations like tonight. I'd like to say thank you to my amazing family for being my rock and the most incredible support system anyone could be blessed with. I would also like to thank everyone who made tonight possible, especially Kelly Tronalone and Heather McKeever. Thank you both so much for all the wonderful things you do. Thank you.
Thank you, Lauren. The courage you show in your everyday life is proof why you are so deserving of this award. Thank you for sharing your story with us because you are making a difference in all the lives that you touch. You are a true champion and we are proud to stand with you in this fight. I would like to now turn it over to friends that you know well, Eric Monahan and Nicole Ellis. Thank you, Steve. I'm here to remind you, tonight we're offering a very special opportunity to contribute directly into helping our mission to the cure of cystic fibrosis through our bid for a cure. Thank you tonight to all those who have donated, and here's a list of our current bids. Thank you all who have donated. You still have time to place your bids. Also, remember, bidding for the silent auction ends at 9 p.m. Folks, we're stronger together and we cannot fight this fight without you. So please keep the bids coming in. It's now with great pleasure that I introduce to you my friend and CF warrior, Nicole Ellis. Thanks, Eric. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Congratulations to our amazing honorees. And a big thank you to our presenting sponsors, Gelia, Marcom, Martech, Rich Products Corporation, and the Rich Family. We appreciate all the support that you've given us tonight and throughout the years. It has taken so many amazing people to get us to this point where someone like myself with cystic fibrosis at age 37 can be happy, healthy, and hopeful when her parents were told that she would be lucky to survive into her teenage years. for the gratitude that I feel and so many CF fighters who now have life-changing treatments like the most recent Trichafta. Tonight, we can celebrate these incredible advances. But remember, those with cystic fibrosis are still fighting for their lives. So I ask, please, be part of the cure. I am confident that with your continued support, we will have much more to celebrate. Thank you, Steve, for hosting this beautiful gala. And with that, I will pass it on to you to close us out. Thank you, Eric and Nicole. In my closing remarks, I want to thank the Breath of Life Gala Committee and the CF staff for their work in re-envisioning the 2021 event. Also, thank you for all of your generous contributions that will go to help those touched by CF your gifts will get us one step closer to a cure. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a hand. I would also like to thank our sponsors tonight and congratulations again to all of our honorees. The silent auction closes at 9 p.m. Thank you all for being here with us. Have a great evening and see you next year. <laughs>